This isn't just another anti-ship missile. It's a predator that thinks for itself, hunting targets over the horizon with cold, calculated precision. This isn't a normal missile. It's a hunter that thinks. Welcome to War Tech Zone. If you follow military tech, you've heard about a new weapon from Israel. People talk about its long range and its accuracy, but what does it actually do, and why does it change everything about a fight at sea? Today, we're not just listing specs, we're going to understand it, piece by simple piece. By the end, you'll see exactly why this tool is so important right now. First, let's be clear. We are talking about a missile system made by Israel. Its job is to hit ships and land targets from very, very far away. We're going to call it the Maritime Strike Missile to keep it simple. The big idea is this. It lets a small country control a very big piece of the ocean. That is a huge shift in power. How does that work? Let's start with the most basic thing, distance. Imagine you're guarding a coastline. In the old days, you had to wait for an enemy ship to get close, almost within sight before you could shoot. That's risky. This new missile changes the game. Its reported range is about 300 kilometers. That's 186 miles. To picture that, think of driving your car for three hours on the highway. That's how far this thing can fly. This means Israel can see a potential threat on radar far out at sea and deal with it long before that threat gets near its shores. The enemy never gets close. They're stopped in open water. This kind of reach turns defense into something much stronger. It's not just about protecting the beach anymore. It's about controlling the entire sea area around your country. But flying far is only useful if you can hit what you're aiming at. A missile that flies 300 kilometers and then misses is just expensive fireworks. So the next big piece is the brain, and this is where it gets really smart. This missile doesn't just fly in a straight line, it has an advanced seeker head, its eyes. These eyes use something called imaging infrared. Instead of just looking for heat, it takes a detailed picture of the target area. Then artificial intelligence looks at that picture. Here is what the AI is programmed to do. As the missile gets closer, it scans the water. It sees shapes. It has to answer a critical question. Which one is my target? Is that big shape a civilian cargo ship? Or is it a warship? Is that small bright spot a decoy flare? Or is it the heat of a ship's engine? The AI compares what it sees to a database of shapes and signatures. It makes a choice. It picks the target it was sent to destroy. And if that target tries to dodge, if the ship turns, the AI sees that too. It adjusts the flight path. It follows. This is called autonomous target recognition. In simple terms, once it's fired, it can finish the job on its own. It doesn't need a person to guide it in at the last second. Think of it like a very smart hawk. You point the hawk in the right direction and tell it, find the rabbit. The hawk flies off, uses its own eyes and brain to spot the rabbit in a field full of other animals, and goes in for the strike. This missile is that hawk. So, it has long range and a smart brain, but what if the enemy sees it coming and shoots it down? That brings us to the third key feature, stealth. This missile is built to be very, very hard to see. It does two main things to hide. First, it flies low, extremely low. This is called sea skimming. It can fly just meters above the waves. Why does this matter? Because a ship's radar looks out across the horizon. When something flies that low, it gets lost in the clutter of the waves on the radar screen. It's like trying to see a fast-moving speedboat when you're looking directly into the sun's glare on the water. It's nearly invisible until it's terrifyingly close. Second, the missile itself is built with special materials and a shape that make it harder for radar to get a good ping back. It has a low radar signature, so even if an advanced radar does get a brief glimpse, the signal is faint and easy to dismiss as a glitch or a bird. Combine these two things, flying super low and being hard to spot on radar, and you have a weapon that gives the enemy very little warning, sometimes just seconds. By the time a ship's crew realizes they are under attack, it is often too late to react. Now let's talk about the machine itself. What does this hunter look like? It's not a giant rocket. Reports say it's about 4 meters long, roughly the length of a small car. It carries a warhead powerful enough to seriously damage or sink a warship. To get all the way out to 300 kilometers, it needs a good engine. It uses a turbojet engine. This is efficient. It doesn't go super fast, but it goes far and for a long time. This steady subsonic flight also helps save fuel for that long journey.
The guidance system is a mix of three technologies, like having three different maps. First, GPS. This is like the missile's phone map. It gives the general directions to the target area. Go to this grid coordinate. Second, an inertial measurement unit, or IMU. This is like the missile feeling its own movement. It counts every turn, every shift, so it always knows where it is, even if someone jams the GPS signal. Third, and most important, are those smart imaging infrared seekers with AI. This is the final map. This is the one that finds the specific target in the crowded port or the busy sea lane and says, that's the one. Before launch, soldiers can program a very clever flight path. They don't have to send it straight at the target. They can tell it to fly out to sea, then turn left, go around an island and approach the target from behind, where its defenses are weakest. They can set these turning points, called waypoints, to avoid known enemy radar sites. So the missile doesn't just take the main road, it takes the back alleys to sneak up on its target. All right, so we have a long-range, smart, and stealthy missile, but a tool is only as good as how many places you can use it. This is where its versatility shines. It's not stuck on just one type of launcher. The most obvious place is on a ship. Israeli ships can carry and fire these missiles to defend themselves or to strike an enemy fleet. This turns every Israeli ship into a long-range sniper. But it can also be fired from the land. These are called coastal defense batteries. Imagine a truck or a hidden bunker on a cliff overlooking a vital sea passage like the Strait of Hormuz or the entrance to the Mediterranean. From this fixed spot, the missile can control all the traffic that comes through that choke point. Just the knowledge that these batteries are there makes an enemy think twice about sending their ships through. Finally, there is an air-launched version. This means Israeli fighter jets like the F-16 can carry these missiles under their wings. A jet takes off, flies out over the sea, and from a safe distance, still far from enemy air defenses, it fires the missile. The missile then does its long-range hunting, and the jet turns around and goes home safe. This is called a standoff attack. The plane never has to get close to the danger. This multi-platform ability is a nightmare for an enemy planner. They have to ask, where will the attack come from today? From a ship I can't find? From a hidden launcher on the coast I didn't map? Or from a jet high in the sky? It spreads their defenses thin. They have to guard against everything, everywhere. That is a massive advantage for Israel. So, let's put it all together in a real-world scenario. How would Israel actually use this system? Picture a tense situation. Intelligence shows a hostile navy grouping together about 250 kilometers off the coast. Their intent seems aggressive. In the past, Israel might have to send its own navy out to meet them, risking a direct and bloody battle. Now, with a maritime strike missile, the response is different. From a coastal battery, a single missile is launched. It zooms out over the water, flying just above the waves. Enemy ships might detect a faint, confusing signal, but it's gone before they can lock on. The missile's AI is searching. It finds the group of ships. It ignores the smaller escort vessels. Its database identifies the largest ship, the command vessel, as the highest value target. It makes a final adjustment and strikes. In one shot, the enemy's command and control is gone. The mission is crippled before a single Israeli sailor is in danger. The remaining ships, now leaderless and shocked, likely turn back. A conflict is deterred without a traditional fight. Or think about defending Israel's new offshore gas fields in the Mediterranean. These are huge floating platforms that are vital to the economy. They're sitting ducks for a terror attack from the sea. By placing coastal defense missiles nearby, Israel creates an invisible shield. Any small boat or ship that approaches with hostile intent can be stopped from dozens of kilometers away. The platform workers are safe. The missile can also hit land targets near the coast. An enemy radar station on a cliff or a missile launcher pointed at Israel could be taken out with a precise strike from the sea. This blurs the line. It's not just an anti-ship weapon, it's a tool for precision strikes on land, too. All of this adds up to something bigger than just a new weapon. It's about strategy. For Israel, a small country surrounded by potential threats, this missile changes its security equation. The Mediterranean Sea is no longer just a border. It becomes a buffer zone that Israel can control. Any adversary knows that if they send their ships into that zone, they are vulnerable. They can be seen and hit from a distance they cannot match. This knowledge is a powerful deterrent. It stops conflicts before they start. It's what military experts call an asymmetric advantage. Israel doesn't need a massive, expensive navy to rule its local seas. It needs a few very smart, very long-reaching missiles 
missiles. This also frees up the real Israeli Navy. Their ships don't have to be on constant dangerous patrol right on the front lines. They can operate from further back, using the missiles range as their primary weapon. It's a smarter, safer way to operate. Now, how does this compare to what other countries have? Many nations, including the US, use missiles like the Harpoon. The Harpoon is excellent, a proven weapon, but it is from an older generation. It has a shorter range, it flies in a more predictable path, it doesn't have the same advanced AI-powered brain to pick its own target in a crowd. It's a powerful tool, but it's a simpler one. Israel's maritime strike missile represents the next step. It's part of a new generation of weapons that combine reach, stealth, and artificial intelligence. It's not alone. Other countries are working on similar ideas, but right now, Israel has it and it's operational. This sets a new bar. It forces every other navy in the region and in the world to think differently. The global impact is real. When one country fields a weapon this effective, others react. Neighboring countries might rush to buy longer-range radar systems from Russia or China. They might invest in their own missile programs. It can start a small arms race in technology. More broadly, it shows the world that the future of warfare is leading heavily into AI and robotics. The human decision is still there to fire the missile, but the final critical act of finding and hitting the target is done by a machine. That is a significant shift. For military planners in other countries, this missile is a case study. They have to ask, how do we defend against something like this? The answer isn't easy. You need better radar that can see lower, you need faster interceptor missiles, you need electronic warfare systems to try and confuse its AI brain. It's a costly and complex challenge. In conclusion, let's bring it back to the simple idea we started with. This isn't just a new piece of metal. It's a system that gives Israel a specific, powerful edge. It takes three simple concepts, shoot far, think smart, hide well, and combines them into one package. It provides security through deterrence. It allows for defense without putting as many lives at immediate risk. It turns a stretch of open ocean into a controlled space. In a region where security is always fragile, that control is priceless. The story of this missile is the story of modern defense, using technology and intelligence to create safety. It's about being so prepared and so capable that a fight becomes the last option for an enemy, not the first. If you found this breakdown helpful and you want to understand the tech that shapes our world, please do two simple things. First, hit the like button. It really helps this channel grow. Second, subscribe to War Tech Zone and tap the notification bell. We work hard to make complex topics clear and straightforward. Now, I'm curious to hear what you think. With weapons like this becoming more common, what's the best way for a traditional Navy to defend itself? Is it better radar, faster interceptors, or something else entirely? Let's have a real talk about it in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.